Summer League starts Friday for the Pelicans. So what do we want to see from Dyson Daniels and others? Plus, can Carlo Makovich make the Pelicans roster this season? And other names you need to keep an eye on. Let's break it all down in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on, was it Wednesday? Day after the 4th of July, and we got the Pelican Summer League breakdown for you. So I hope you had a fun day yesterday. For all those of y'all who are an everyday, or you definitely listened to the yesterday show, you've all been listening this week. It's the number one Pelicans podcast right here. So make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Comment down below on YouTube if you want to support the channel. Become an everyday, never miss an episode. We got you covered on everything you need to know with this Pelicans team, including a deep dive on Summer League in today's episode. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $200 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on so summer league starts on friday i love it love it love it everyone loves summer league because it's fun fresh start kind of the beginning of a new season you get to see players in action and guess what summer league though isn't that important it's fun don't get me wrong it gives us a chance to overreact i watched chet holmgren play the other night and i am all in on chet holmgren but honestly summer league in terms of development and other things, I do think is actually overrated. I'm sorry to kill your buzz a little bit, but it needs to be said when we look at some of these players. Most of the people here are kind of professional summer league guys. They just get brought in for summer league to fill out the rosters, get some money, get some free meals, hang out in Vegas for a week or two, and then go back to their day jobs or go back to playing overseas, and they're not NBA-level talent. And that's okay. This is for the fans. This is just to do something, and we all enjoy it. So that's totally fine. So Summer League isn't that important, particularly for rookies. It's important in the sense of you want them to get adjusted, get acclimated, spend some time with coaches and their teammates, learn the offense, learn the defense, and try and just get a head start on next season, something that they don't have compared to a lot of the veterans on the roster. So for a guy like Jordan Hawkins, those are the most important things. How he plays is not important to me, and I don't care. If he struggles, totally fine. He plays exceptionally well. That's not a bad thing. In fact, that's probably a good thing. But Summer League is not necessarily the mark of guys that are like, oh, that dude's going to be a stud in the NBA. It's really just try and show you belong, but if you struggle, that's okay too. Right? You know, Jackson Hayes would have been an all-star after his first Summer League. Same for Nikhil Alexander-Walker. And that's not how either of those two players' careers ended up going. You just want them to kind of learn and do the right things and start to become a pro NBA player, which they will start doing. Have a little fun, mesh with your teammates, build some chemistry, all of those things. So it doesn't really matter if Jordan Hawkins struggles. We see him moving, catching the ball, turning, shooting. That's all I want to see from him. That's what his role in the NBA and with this Pelicans team is going to be anyway. And he can do all of that. He'll be able to do that even if he struggles in summer league. So it's completely fine with me. Now, for guys that aren't rookies, it's a little bit different. Dyson Daniels needs to dominate Summer League. Second-year players, you look at differently in this. You've been in the NBA for a little bit. You know, Dyson has 11 starts under his belt. He played in 70-something games, whatever it was, 60-something games. He should be too good for Summer League, especially after being a lottery pick from a year ago. This is a guy that knows what it takes to be in the NBA, has proven that he should be in the NBA. He was the eighth overall pick and did some things, even if the season was up and down. It's 59 games, 11 starts, 17.7 minutes per. He needs to dominate summer league. Simple as that. You know, if he struggles, that's a minor concern. 
Second year players are expected to be better significantly more so than the rookies coming in because they've done it. They've gone through it. They've proven they belong in the NBA if they were getting NBA minutes. Think like Najee Marshall. You know, after a couple summer leagues, it was like he doesn't need to be here. He's too good for this. Not an amazing NBA player at times. At times, he's pretty good. But you could see that it was like, yeah, okay, he doesn't need summer league. That's the type of progression that you want to see from your players. That's what you want to see from guys being too good from summer league because that is a sign that you belong in the NBA, which Najee Marshall does. You want to see that from Dyson Daniels. 20 points per game, something like that, a bunch of assists, rebounds, good defense, just straight making fools of folks. Now, um, EJ Liddell is also kind of in this mix, but he's a little bit in between Jordan Hawkins and Dyson Daniels. Uh, you know, he played one game last year, a couple of minutes, then had the injury and sat out all of this season. So he's got some of the acclimation stuff down, I think, but he doesn't have maybe the rust knocked off. We'd like to see him play well and just look like he belongs and move well. And from the videos we've seen of him in the offseason, dunking, moving, shooting, you know, going through the workouts, I think he'll be fine. I'd like to see him, I wouldn't put him, my expectations for him on the level of a second year player, but it's definitely not a rookie either. So he's like one and a half here, something like that, I think, is what I'm kind of expecting from him. He should play pretty well. I expect him to play pretty well and look like he should have been a previous first round pick because he probably should have been. But that's kind of my expectation for him. In terms of him on the roster, and we'll do a deeper dive on him on a show in the future, I don't know if he's going to be on the roster on opening day. You know, given the salary cap situation, the Pelicans want to make another deal. I think keeping him on a two-way is very advantageous for him. And for the Pelicans, given that he didn't play at all last season and probably needs to go through some G League games and kind of get up to speed and shake off that rust and kind of get back into the swing of things, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I think that's kind of the early plan for EJ Liddell with all of that. But you'll see him in Summer League. You know, it really should be Dyson Daniels as the leader. EJ Liddell is kind of the second leader there. Third leader is a guy we'll talk about next in Carlo Makovic and what his chances of making the Pelicans roster this coming year are. And I'll tell you what those are. And then you look at guys like Jordan Hawkins and others. But summer league for rookies, don't, don't worry too much about it. It's second year players, other players that you really, really want to see something from. That's Dyson Daniels. That's kind of EJ Liddell, kind of Carlo Makovic. Let's talk about Carlo Makovic, a guy people are very excited about and a guy that the Pelicans are very high on. So does that mean he's going to make the roster next season? Hold on. I'll break it all down for you. Coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting the MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to hit that first home run. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on the MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official betting partner of Major League Baseball and the official sports betting partner of Locked On. Thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday. No one else comes to y'all like this. The number one Pelicans podcast. Show's been popping off the past couple of days. We're hitting the topics that you want to hear. I'm in the comments talking with y'all since Twitter. I don't know if it's really working. It's struggling for me. So if you want to interact with me, comments on YouTube. I'll reply. I promise. Let me know what you think about a Damian Lillard trade if you listen to yesterday's episode. And we'll have more on what the Pelicans need to look at and areas they need to target this offseason in tomorrow's show. Then, of course, we're going to be deep into Summer League. And I'm excited. We're still Monday through Friday for all of July. Then we'll probably drop it down to three days a week or so and give myself a little bit of a break as we ramp up going into next season. So if you're an everydayer, thank you. The show does incredibly well, and that's because of you. That's why I'm here every day trying to put this out for you. I'm recording this the morning of July 4th before we go have a little bit of fun working on holidays. 
Okay. Summer league teams. So kind of players you need to keep an eye on. We just went over the, the real big names there. And Dyson Daniels, EJ Liddell, and Jordan Hawkins, right? Draft picks of the Pelicans. But they also have another draft pick from last season, and that's Carlo Makovic, who played in Europe. Second round pick, 52nd overall. I got to find it here. 52nd overall for the Pelicans, and he played in the uh, Serbian League last season. So this is a player that's, I think, really intriguing to New Orleans. 6'11", was on the Summer League team last year and looked decent during his time, but didn't play a ton. Injuries just decimated that Summer League team last year that was just incredibly annoying and un unfun with everything. But Makovic is a guy that I think they would like to bring to the NBA eventually. He gives you rebounding and defense. Those are the main things that he provides, and those numbers have been pretty good. He's not a three-point shooter, not a court spacer, but he's tough. He fights for boards. He has very good size. Young, too. He's an energetic, kind of almost, at times, high-flying big man. They like him, and I think he's going to have an opportunity to have a starring role on this summer league team. I also do not think, if I can tell you, he's not going to be on the Pelicans roster next year. I don't think he's going to be on the actual roster. I think you were a year away from that at earliest, probably a year away. But I think they want to see him out there. I think this is an opportunity for them to really evaluate the future with him. If they view him as a potential starter, and I think they might, this is a guy that maybe is your Jonas Valanciunas replacement in the future if you don't go out and get a big name, expensive, long-term center this offseason. I think they see him as a guy that can give you that low usage, rebounding defense that they want out of that center position alongside Zion Williamson, someone you don't need to invest a lot of resources or you know the ball into. So Kyle Makovic is, is a person to really keep an eye on. If he really impresses, I think that's someone they're going to look to bring in over in a year, but don't see him. He's not going to make the team this year. Couple other names to keep an eye on here: Darian Sebron on a Pel on a two-way deal for the Pelicans. You had two two-ways last year: EJ Liddell, Sebron, and you get a third one this coming season too. So Darian Sebron last year on a two-way deal for New Orleans, played in a handful of games, but with the G League Birmingham squadron, 17.9 points per game, 4.8 rebounds, 5.1 assists. He's got good size at six feet, uh, six foot five, and is a downhill attacking guard. The dude can throw down some dunks. Very good speed, gets downhill, attacks, played in five games for the Pels last season. You know, this is a guy that I would imagine is going to be a starter for the team. You kind of imagine the starters would be something like Sebron, Dyson Daniels, maybe Hawkins in there too, Makovic, and probably EJ Liddell is what I would imagine. Maybe one of those guys, one of the guards comes off the bench. But Sebron is someone they've, they've wanted to see if it could work. They were high on in the pre-draft process, brought him in on a two-way deal, didn't make the team, played in the G League, has played well. I think you know potentially if you just need some cheap guard depth, this is someone that could provide it. You can do that while keeping him on a two-way deal and just using up those allotments of games that he can play. But I would not be shocked if he averages over 20 points per game in Summer League. Likes the ball, likes to play downhill and score, and can still dish the rock by breaking teams down off those dribble drives, forcing rotations, kicking it out to open shooters. Don't be surprised if you see a lot of assists from Sebron going to Jordan Hawkins for open three-pointers. Final kind of key name, I think, to keep an eye on, and we'll get to Liam Robbins in a minute. I know that's one you're, you're all going to ask about, is Isaiah Brockington. This was someone who actually was on a Pelicans two-way deal for all of like a couple of days last season. They brought him in during the pre-draft process. He had uh, an injury, an ACL injury, that basically kept him out for all year, but they liked him. This was someone they were going to look at in the second round, someone that they were going to really try and look at for a two-way deal. Ended up signing him for a two-way deal for like two days before waiving him and then had him with the G League team, just kind of recovering from injury. Six foot four, a guard that I think they feel could do relatively well. Has not been a great three-point shooter, you know, throughout his time, but someone they seem to like, really good size, see him being a defensive guy too. He was on the, he had a two-way deal for 10 days, over a week. 
And so I think this is someone they're looking at long term. They were high on him early. Injury kind of derailed everything for him a little bit and kind of set off on a different path. But I think they want to see if they can potentially get something out of him. And so I would not be shocked if you saw him get significant minutes here with this team to see if he shows some of that potential that they once saw during the pre-draft process with him. I think he is also a candidate for the third two-way deal. I think they feel like they want to do a little bit right by him after he suffered that injury during a pre-draft workout with New Orleans. And, you know, overall had played relatively well um, for a couple of time, you know, a couple of different places here, especially his senior season with Iowa State. So there's potential there for him to be a guy that was good. He averaged 17 points per game, uh, seven rebounds in one season, his senior year at Iowa State, and was great for them. They see a lot of scoring potential there, good size and rebounding too, team rebounding, something they want. It's another name to kind of keep an eye on. There's also another name, and I want to I wanna hit the brakes a little bit on Liam Robbins, but we'll look at him as well as the schedule, the broadcast, all of that stuff, because I think there's a little bit of telling information in there. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. And thank you for making Locked on Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, completely free, the number one Pelicans podcast breaking down everything you want to know about this team, doing a deep dive on Summer League, what a trade could look like for Damian Lillard, and why there's likely another move coming. That's just been this week alone. Become an everyday or never miss an episode. Know what's going on with this Pelicans team, covering it like no one else is, and completely free. All you got to do if you want to support the channel, listen Monday through Friday, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and on YouTube, and comment down below on YouTube, and we're going to Keep on rolling here on Locked On Pelicans. So let's look at other names on the Summer League roster and some things you need to know. So the I got to pull up the schedule. It just, just left here. Okay, so the schedule is game one, Friday versus the Timberwolves, July 7th. Sunday, July 9th, they're playing the Warriors, 9, 9 p.m., Tuesday, July 11th, 7 p.m. against the Suns. Thursday, July 13th, 6.30 p.m. against the Hornets. So that is your summer league schedule. Every team plays a fifth game, either going to be on July 15th or 16th, depending on kind of how you finish. The top two teams by record go on, and then point differential or whatever the um, tiebreakers are, go on to win the G League championship, and that's that. They just pick the two best teams that everyone else kind of gets paired off. So you get five games. Uh, also of note in this, the Pelicans are going to broadcast all of their summer league games on pelicans.com and the Pelicans app. Gus Kattengill of ESPN Radio, the Sports Hangover, and regular guest on there is going to be play-by-play duties. Aaron Summers, friend of the show who's been on, is going to be joining him as color analyst. She is your host for the Pelicans, their analyst there too in-house. And so you're going to be able to get all of those games on the Pelicans app and pelicans.com. It's also going to be on NBA TV and ESPN. So you'll be able to watch every Pelicans summer league game, including local commentary if you want it. We talked about the broadcast last week. I don't quite think this is a test of that, but it's showing you they have the capacity to do some of this stuff. Get a game on a streaming app, things like that. Worth worth, worth just kind of knowing here. Also, for the Pelicans, things you need to know, the Summer League head coach is going to be, and I'm just blanking as I'm talking, um, Casey Hill, who's been, uh, this is his fourth year with the Pelicans, started a couple of years ago and has stayed. He's going to be someone who is going to be leading the team. Ryan Frazier is an assistant coach. He's going to be there too. Corey Brewer is a player development coach. And Darnell Lazar is going to be there as well. They're all, that's kind of your summer league coaching staff. Willie Green will be there. James Borrego will be there. The team will be practicing all together. But those are the people kind of running the show. So a couple of more names that you need to know when it comes to the Pelicans in Summer League. And the one that everyone's really curious about is Liam Robbins, the center, seven-footer out of Vanderbilt. Here's the thing with Liam Robbins. The numbers sound great. 
SEC Defensive Player of the Year, and the Pelicans have done a good job with upperclassmen defensive players of the year. Jose Alvarado with the ACC, Herb Jones with the SEC previously, and Liam Robbins, 15 points per game, 6.8 rebounds, 3.2 blocks. Okay, he's injured. Fractured his leg, had surgery earlier in the year, and isn't going to be playing at all in summer league, and probably not till August or September. So, I don't know. You know, people think, like, can he be a starter? Can he do this? Can he make the roster? He's not going to make the roster. Again, summer league guys that you're inviting like this aren't usually very good. You'd be drafted otherwise. He's also older. He's born in 1999. Think about that for a second. He's older than Zion Williamson is. You know, I don't know how much potential for the future is there there is other than taking a chance on a guy. But when I've seen people say it could be, you know, Walker Kessler for the Pelicans, like, no, we don't don't go there. And if you set yourself up with those expectations, you're going to be severely disappointed when it comes to something like that. And he's not playing. And so that, I think, is part of the problem. Walker Kessler was born in 2001. So he's much younger, too. And he was a first round pick. There's, there's a difference there in terms of their projections and their ceilings. It's worth taking a chance on some of these guys, getting them into summer league and seeing what you can get out of them. But I would hold off on some of the expectations with a lot of these players. Summer league's cool. It's fun. Like I said, it's important for your second year guys who you know are going to be on the roster to go out and play well. It's important for rookies to get acclimated, but everyone else, it's a real, 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 real long shot. And there's better ways to go and acquire players that you think can be difference makers. So I don't think you know, any of these players are really going to end up making the team. A couple of other names just to kind of keep an eye out. There's Landers Nolly, the second out of Cincinnati. You know, a guy with good size on the wing at six foot seven can go out and score. You have Frank Bartley, the fourth two from Baton Rouge, played at Louisiana Lafayette. You know, has been playing overseas since then, too. I think they could see him as just kind of adding a little bit of local flavor to the roster. I think that's great. I would love to see more stuff like that when it comes to the Pelicans. And those are really the names that you need to know. You know, let's see how Dyson Daniels does. This should be a big summer league for him. Want to see a good enough stuff from EJ Ladella and Carlo Makovic, but Carlo's going to be playing overseas for another year. Can Sebron earn a spot on the roster? Can Isaiah Brockington get the other two-way deal? Could Liam Robbins eventually get the other two-way deal? Or even Landers Nolly, too, I think is going to really be in the running for that. I think those are the people that you're really supposed to keep an eye out here for Summer League. As some of these names will also be brought back to the Pelicans when it comes to training camp too. But I think to fill out the rest of the roster, and there's about two roster spots right now, it's not going to be these players. They're going to be looking for a couple of other things too as they figure out what they're doing with the salary cap, the luxury tax, all of those things, and maybe bringing in Damian Lillard or upgrading at the center position. Let me know who you're most excited to see in Summer League in the comments down below on YouTube. Are you going to be watching on ESPN, NBA TV, or the Pelicans app? I'm excited for all of it. I'm going to be watching the local broadcast here. And that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Pelicans. Hope you enjoyed it yesterday. Tomorrow we'll be back more looking at the Pelicans offseason, what they need to do, what other tweaks and changes could be coming. And as always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I'll be back with y'all tomorrow for the Everydayers.